Hello everybody. So um, today I'm going to talk about disc brakes. Um, I've been researching on the internet and I could not find a, a disc brake kit for a 1939 thir or 1940 Chevy pickup truck. Um, and I find them on Speedway Motors for 1947 up to 59 Chevy truck. They say it won't fit a early one like mine's a 39. But I think 39, maybe even 37 even is the same. But I know 39 up till um, 1946, they say it won't fit. But I feel like it would. So I ordered a disc brake kit from Speedway Motors for a 1947 through 59 Chevy truck. And here's what I've learned because I couldn't find any information on this online on YouTube anywhere. So I'm going to share with you what I learned and discovered. Some preliminary things. So here's my spindle for my 1939 Chevy truck. Um, the spacing, like the bolt spacing here and here and here is the same um, on, on, on like all of them. So that's not the problem. The problem is um, this, this bearing on the inner bearing on the inside. And here it is right here. The spindle on the um, early ones are smaller right here than it is on the late ones. But even with the late model ones, they still have to make a bearing adapter right here. And, and I've wondered how this was made. It's just a thick piece of metal here, and it's thin here. And what it does is it slides on here, and it creates a bigger journal here so that your seal has something to ride on there so it'll actually seal it off and and the bearing here will set on this journal right here so it makes this journal just a little bit bigger enough to compensate for this bearing now the prop now now the outer bearing is the same on the early ones like the 39 up to 46 the outer bearing is the same as the ones from 47 up to 59 the other problem is this inner bearing. So what I discovered and thought about doing, and again, I'm not telling you to do this. I'm simply giving you some inspiration. Maybe you can figure out your own thing. So what I did was I thought about it, and I went and bought a simple copper water pipe a coupler for a one-inch pipe. It's as close as I could get than to start with. So my idea is to put a sleeve on the uh, on this right here, like a spacer, so that when this spacer slides on, it'll have something tight, okay? Because right now, it, it, it doesn't. It, it's loose and it's, you know, it doesn't need much. So I took this coupler and I, and I took and kind of, well, I sanded mine down, but if you, you'd be better off if you chucked it up in a lathe and then turned it down and took some meat off of it right off. How much? I don't know. Maybe 15 thousandths. Anyway, uh, then, then what I will do is I will put some heat on this right here, on this uh, uh, copper. And I will take a washer, a steel washer put on here, and a block of wood. Then go around this and take a hammer and drive that down on there. It will spread this copper out. And it will slide right down on there and fit it really good and tight. Then I'll that then I will cut it off here somewhere along here so it so it comes out to about here. I've already done it on one and it worked. Um, it's a bit of a challenge getting that drove over and getting it spread out on there. You got to make sure that you, that your spindle is smooth so it doesn't catch on a hump. So anyway, the other thing that you can do is. I also uh, thought about trying these pecs. You know, I'm just looking for something then to take that space up. Wouldn't mind have steel, but that was a challenge. The copper was the closest I could get. And I, and, and, and I got these uh, these pecs, um, um, like pipe crimper uh, connectors for one inch pipe. And and, and if you want to try this, you, 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 you could. I thought, like, I got these at, at Menards. And you could try these. They are they are um, pretty narrow, but you can put multiples on them and slide those on there and then drive them down. 
my reason why I chose not to use these was these are softer than these are. And I felt like I was pushing my luck using copper to begin with. But this is a hard copper, so I think it'll live pretty good. These might, I don't know, but it's just an idea. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is going to take this sleeve here, just simple one-inch pipe coupler, and I'm going to drive it on there and create a, like a bushing for this bushing then to slide over so it's snug. So anyway, that's what we're going to do, and we're going to put disc brakes from Speedway Motors made for 1947 through 59 Chevy onto my 1939 Chevy, and we're going to do what they say can't be done because we are eastbound and down. Catch y'all later. I'll let you know the results. So again, there's my truck. And there's my spindle right there. So there, there it is with it pressed on there. And I, I, I just used the whole collar. I didn't cut it off at all. So the way I got it on there was, uh, obviously I, I took and chamfered the inside of this right here to round it. So when it slipped over, it would slide over it instead of that edge. Uh, ca uh, catching on everything and um, so anyway I got it started put it down on here like so took um, took a, uh, I needed something flat that would keep from damaging that edge I, so I took a washer and then I drilled it out with a step bit and then laid it on there so it would seat on that bottom of that pipe all the way and then I just used my old inner race because I'm not going to use it anymore for anything else. And I thought it was a great heavy spacer tool thing. And I took and laid it up on here like that. Okay. And uh, then I took uh, one of my so uh, or one of my sockets, found a socket here that was uh, about an inch and a quarter and laid it up on there like that. So give me a hollow space right in here for that shaft into going through. Took my hammer, way laid it down. After it got so deep, then I had to, um, then I had to put another socket or something on the top of that because the shaft started to come through here. And when I got done, that right there is what I had when I got it down on there, as you can see there. So when you take it off, you understand why you need something because it protrudes up. Be very careful to not damage these threads or else I'll have to uh, straighten them up. Anyway, but you can, you can see using these spacers and then I pull that off and then I'm down to the washer and I pull that off and there we are. So now here's my, here's my bearing adapter. You slide it over here, and it it just goes on there, with then with no movement, and 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 when I started, so when I started, these right here then was like one twenty five on the outside, one twenty five. Uh, you know, using my calipers. Well, actually, closer to one thirty, one thirty two, when I started on it. Okay. I didn't take out anything out of the inside. I just left it the way it was. Then I took and sanded this off and, and, and until I got down till it was about 115. Till it was about 115. I sanded enough off. Don't take any more than that off. I mean, that would be overall. So I took roughly 15 thousandths off overall. Don't take any more than that off. And then when I drove it down on there, I had just about the right fit. And that will fix my problem, I think. Also, here's something else that I did too. I needed to change all the bushings in the springs, the front and the back and the back springs as well. So you can buy the rubber inserts if you can find them. They're not real easy, but, but you can. But what I discovered is they sell most of them for a three-quarter eyelet, and mine is seven-eighths if you take that bushing out of there. So, um, so, and then also in the original shackles, 
they had them where they press in. It's a weird setup. So I opted, you, know, you can buy the shackles. I opted to just use what I got. And, and the holes were kind of chewed up. So I drilled them out until five eighths went through there. Like I got a five eighths bolt here at one of the local farm stores at Rule King. And it fits right in there with absolutely no slop whatsoever. So that, that fits it pretty good. And it tightens that hole up. And still, it leaves me with enough meat left around it that I don't feel like I have weakened it uh, uh, too awfully bad. So, as opposed to using the rubber bushing, what I decided to, to do was use these oil light. And then I got these from... Uh, uh, oh yeah, McMaster Car. Got these from McMaster Car. You can look up on there. And I got a 7.8 OD and a 5.8 ID because it was a bit cheaper depending on what bushing you, you get can drastically affect the price. So I got them two inches wide. I will, I will press them in there and then cut off what I don't need. But works really, really well. Fits right in there. It's a nice snug fit. And since it's oil light, it'll stay lubricated for quite a long time. I think they'll hold up pretty good. Here's one I've already put in the front. My rivets, so this goes in the front here, and my rivets were loose. So I ha I'm gonna have to, to, to fix that. And I cut the, so I had to cut the rivets off. But as you can see, I've already got a bushing pressed in there, one of those. So I just have to cut this end off, and I'll be ready to put that bolt through there. Swing those up and put that bolt through there, and I'll be good, good to go. And also, for the bushings in the back of the spring, on the, on the front end here, we're on the, we're on the front of it. On the back of the spring, and the same size is on the front of the back spring there. I got a different size for, I mean, for that. I think it's 11 sixteenths bolt, and I can't remember the outside dimension. Um, oh, yeah, I think it's, uh, it is also um, 7 eighths. Yes, 7 eighths but it's 11 sixteenths on the center. So they will go right there where that is. And again, McMaster car for, for, uh, for these as well. So I'm well underway. I, I, I know it's a rough video and I know I didn't show you everything, but maybe you'll at least get some idea and some inspiration. Uh, and another thing, I'm going to put power steering on this, and I'll do a video on that later. But I got the, um, I think it's called the the 730 series box. But the main thing is that the mounting points for the frame, like right here, is on the steering sector side. Most of the mounting points are on this other side over here. But I'll do a video about that later. But that's just a, a steering box off of like a 68 through 86 a General Motors truck because they mounted those on the outside of the frame. And the steering box on here was in there. It's going to be right in the way of my exhaust header. So I need to get it out of there. And I decided and found out that I can actually mount the box right up in here on the side. And it'll be out of the way. And I just have to run my steering shaft up there and uh, slightly change my linkage down here. But I'll do a video about that later. But I just want to tell you, there's a solution for power steering as well. Peace out, y'all. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, hope I give you some kind of inspiration at least. I guess that makes it a 39 truck because... I don't know if 40 had those. Maybe it did. Maybe 39 40 had these, but after 41, they didn't have these and the frame came on up here, I think. But I, I don't know. If y'all can tell me, if anybody watching this, what then my question is, does 1940 truck 
have these these pieces right here? Do they have those, or is it just uh, the steel frame? Let me, let me know about that, because I think mine's a 1939.